Hi, and welcome to Lisa's Stamp Studio and tonight's YouTube Live. If this is your first time joining me, I'd like to welcome you. I'm so glad that you've come by. It is my hope that I won't only inspire you, but give you a lot of tips to help in your card making process. That's one of the things I absolutely love about what I'm sharing is because I've got some tips to make it easier for you. Now, if this is your first time watching, you may not know what to expect. There are gonna be a lot of interaction with those that are here with me live. Now, if you're here with me live, make sure that you're signed in to your YouTube account, which is your Gmail address. That's a YouTube thing, not a Lisa thing. It's in order for you to live chat. In addition to that, if you are watching the replay, I love to interact with you, so please leave comments below. Um, also, tonight's card, I've got a twist for you. In addition to the one I'm gonna demonstrate, I've got another one to share with you with a holiday theme. So make sure you watch all the way to the end so you can glean the absolute most ideas that you possibly can. Now, before we get started, I wanna go over a couple things with you. First, for those of you that are commenting live, please remember there is a delay between when I'm speaking and when I'm actually able to see your comments here on my iPad. So please be um, patient with me. And because I'm so busy stamping, oftentimes I can't catch them all because you guys type faster than I can actually stamp and read at the same time, which is why I have Megan. So I'd like to introduce you to her. Megan's name is here in blue off to the side. It actually has a little wrench next to it. She's my virtual YouTube assistant and she is amazing. Those of you that have been here before know how incredibly helpful and knowledgeable she is. And she's gonna be here to answer your questions and interact with you because I'll be stamping, that's why you came. Okay, I think that's about it. I've got tons to share with you tonight in addition to tonight's project. So buckle in, here we go. I'm gonna turn the camera down and let's get started. I am so glad that you've all joined me. Thank you for being here. Okay, I know it's a little wobbly. Bear with me here because I want to make sure you get a nice view. Okay, I think we're ready. Let's get started with some stamping first. I've got a piece of designer series paper here. It's patterned, double-sided. This is from the Gather Together um, designer series paper stack. I lost my train of thought for a second. I wanted to make sure I got the name right. You know, lots of names of products in my brain and sometimes I forget but I'm gonna stamp an image on here using this, um, the early espresso ink pad. Now this is totally different. Mostly you're gonna see images that I stamp are not on designer series paper, especially when they're outlined images. Sometimes I prefer to color them in or use a way to fill color into that image. But tonight we're gonna to be doing something different because I wanna teach you something quick and easy that you may not have thought of. These lighter colored and even grained designer series papers are gonna give you a quick, easy, and impressive card with little to no work. Now this pumpkin is gonna be coming from the stamp set called Harvest Hellos. You're gonna be able to find that in the current Stampin' Up! holiday catalog. We also have an annual catalog, lots more great things in there, and we'll talk about that as we get a little bit further along. But this is also offered as a bundle, which means it has a coordinating punch that punches out the pumpkins and the apples. And you can see from here that you're gonna be able to use this for quite a few different things. All right, so I've got my pumpkin here. I'm gonna ink that up in the early espresso ink and I'm gonna stamp that down here in the lower right corner. All right, so we've got our image. I'm just got my hand off camera, bear with me here to clean my stamp. I'm gonna actually put this off to the side because we're gonna come back and use that in just a moment. And remember me telling you about that coordinating apple builder punch. Now it's kind of got a weird name because you're thinking this is a pumpkin and you call that an apple builder. Well, the shapes are the same, so it plays double duty. I'm gonna flip it upside down and I'm gonna punch this out. Now here's an important tip, number one, I'm gonna share with you. The negative that we have here, you see it? Really important. I want you to make sure that when you're using this stamp set and this coordinating punch that you save that. You're gonna find that this is gonna be extremely helpful as we build our pumpkin. So I'm gonna set that off to the side and I've got another piece of designer series paper here. As a matter of fact, you're gonna notice it's the exact same paper as this. I've just flipped it over. Now I know I could have used the scraps, but I wanna give you an important tip that I think is gonna be very helpful for you, which is why I brought in this little piece here. I'm bringing in the leaf that's part of this stamp set. You're gonna notice there's another leaf in here too. So you've got some options and of course the tendrils. I'm opting to ink that up again in the early espresso ink. So I'm gonna ink that up. Do you see the direction this leaf is going? So if you stamp it this way, you're gonna be struggling with the punch. 
That's why this is so important. So I'm going to ink that up and I'm going to stamp that simulating that same direction here on that negative. So there we go. We've got that. I'm inking up, uh, cleaning off that stamp. Here comes my punch. We can go ahead and manipulate that right inside of there. It's going to leave a nice little pretty border all the way around. And then we've got our leaf. Okay, so we've got two pieces so far. I'm still going to use this template for the next step because now I'm going to bring in the stem to my pumpkin. And this time I've got it mounted, oh, wrong stamp, here we go, on this image here. Again, pay attention to the direction so that it fits easily inside of your punch. So I'm gonna go ahead and ink that up. These little outline images, I, I don't wanna make sure I mention this. I know sometimes people actually ask me, how come I've got ink all around the outside of the rubber? And that's because you're really excited. You're pressing really, really hard. The Stampin' Up! ink pads are a firm foam, which means they're going to hold the ink very, very well, but there's a little sponge to them. So if you're really aggressive, you're going to get ink around the outside perimeter. And then when you stamp it, you're going to get what I call that shadow or those lines, this outer area. So not only are you going to get this, but you're going to get this. So take your time and just tap up and down. If you're a new stamper, it takes a little bit of practice, but I'm telling you what, it's worth it. You see the direction of the stem here? We're gonna stamp this in the same direction here so we can make sure that it's going to fit in the punch. So I've got my punch here and I'm gonna bring that in and you can see how well this is going to stamp and punch. All right, so now we've got those pieces. I'm gonna set off that builder punch to the side for right now and then we're gonna go ahead and build this. Now I'm gonna give you another tip. When I actually created this template, I created it on cardstock and look what I did. I kept it here inside the stamp case and I labeled which side was the front because you wanna make sure you don't invert this because otherwise that's gonna be backwards for your punch. And then what I did is I put a little glue dot on the back and I put it inside the stamp case, which makes it super easy for you to be able to have that template to refer to when you're using the stamp set. So I'm hoping that helps you as well. All right, let's put this together. I am going to close this up and set that aside because an open ink pad around here is always dangerous. So I've got my image here and what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna add my little stem. Now there's several ways you can do that. You can certainly flip this over and add a little bit of adhesive, but I know what I'm gonna do with it tonight. So I'm actually gonna use a glue dot. I want something a little bit stronger. I have one here that's already exposed. I know that's probably a little difficult to see. And then I've got my leaf. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna attach my leaf onto my glue dot and I'm going to press. These are really sticky and they work wonderful. And if you press, it's gonna lift the glue dot off with it. So I'm gonna place that little leaf here. And then here comes that stem we just talked about. And I'm gonna place another glue dot here at the bottom, the thin area of my stem. And the reason I'm using this versus um, my adhesive is because I'm actually gonna build this up a little bit. So there we go. We've got our whole little pumpkin put together. I'm gonna actually do a little bit more to this and then we're gonna set this aside and work on the rest of our card. I wanted to gussy this up a little bit because I knew there was a little bit too much white areas on my card. So I decided to bring in my linen thread. I don't know when's the last time you guys have used this, but I love this stuff, lots of reasons. It's really, really simple to use and it's inexpensive. So you can use lots of it and have fun. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip that image over and I'm grabbing my dimensionals here and I am generously going to add these to the back side. So I'm gonna put them here and here. And again, I said I was gonna be really, really generous. And then what I'm gonna do next is remove those paper backings. And I love to use my take your pick tool. It's got a little pickup tip here, interchangeable tips, love that. I've got a whole video about this. The take your pick tool, this is the paper piercing tool attachment. And what it's gonna do is it's actually going to lift off those paper backings for me so I don't have to peel them and look, they're all corralled in one place. I love that. So I wanted to expose that other sticky side so that this next step would be easier for my hands. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull off some of this. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna create some loops. And I'm gonna show you the easy way to do that. Use your hand. Start with the circumference of your hand and determine if that's too wide because you always can go down to several fingers. So I'm gonna start with a raw end here. You can see it hanging out. And I'm gonna run this around my hand a couple times. And then all I'm gonna do is slide it and I'm gonna pinch it here in the center just to kind of wrangle it. This is not meant to be neat and pretty. So if you like neat and pretty, this might not be for you. And then what I'm gonna do is attach it here to my dimensionals and I'm gonna flip this over and then I can kind of foo-foo it out, you know, kind of like spread it out, make it look kind of pretty, make it look a little bit more purposeful. 
But what this does is it gives a lot of dimension to our image without a lot of expense or effort. And I'm going to come in with my scissors and I'm going to trim that away. So these look a little bit more finished. All right. So I'm going to set that here. Remember, we've got dimensionals, but we've got our silicone craft sheet. Nothing will stick to this. I love it. So liquid glue, hot glue, and adhesive will not stick to it. I cannot live without this here in the stamp studio. It makes my crafting so much easier because if you've ever got adhesive on your work surface, you know you're fighting that sticky spot the entire time. So I'm going to set that here. I still got plenty of room here to work to finish up my card. Now I'm going to set that off to the side because we need a little bit more room for this next step. And I've got a piece of cardstock here. This is Early Espresso, which coordinates with the ink we just used. This is the beauty of Stampin' Up! products is the color coordination. I'm telling you what, you cannot beat it. So the ink matches the cardstock that matches the alcohol-based markers and the dye-based markers and the accessories and on and on and on. Now, if you don't already have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator and you would like to have complimentary copies of the current holiday or the annual catalog, just head over to lisasstampstudio.com and click on contact me. I'm going to have all the cutting dimensions in a link down in the video description below after tonight's live. So just be patient with Megan and I. Give us a few minutes for the video to render and we'll get that link down there for you. It's going to give you pictures, supplies, and all the cutting dimensions. So I'm going to bring in my paper trimmer. Now, some of you might be looking at this going, well, that looks different. I have big, big news for you. Those of you that have been waiting for an awesome paper trimmer, your time is almost up. This is the brand new Stampin' Up! paper trimmer, and it will be available to you on November 1st. And I was so excited when demonstrators were given the information today and the go that it was coming to you on November 1st. You're going to love this. $25, okay? So you get the cutting and the scoring blade. Check out the measurements. You've got to love that. Look how detailed they are. There's a clear coating on the top, so you don't have to worry about that rubbing off. Check this out. There's an extension arm, and look at this. It goes to 17 and a quarter inches. You are good to go. It has non-slip feet. Now, there's one thing about this trimmer that's different than our previous trimmer that I want to show you. There's a handle here. Do you guys see this? If you lift that, it actually unlocks it from the track. So listen, do you hear the snap? Which means if you're transporting this to a friend's or to a crop or scrapbooking from one room to the other, you don't have to worry about picking it up and having any of the blades or the pieces fall out. I absolutely love this. You are going to want this. November 1st, you'll be able to purchase it in my online store at lisastampstudio.com. Again, $25 US. All right, so I'm opening up the track and I've got my cardstock here and I know you're gonna ask, so for those of you, I'm just gonna kind of fill you in, but remember that link's gonna be below. This is four and a quarter by eight and three quarters. And I am going to score at five and a half inches, which is right up here at the top. So I'm gonna line that up. I'm gonna make sure I'm using my light blade, which is scoring, and I'm going to score. I'm telling you what, this works lickety split. And I'm telling you, let me also tell you, I have had this trimmer since the day demonstrators could purchase it, which was the beginning of this month. I have workhorsed this thing to death. When I tell you thousands and thousands of cuts and scores on this, I am not kidding you, and the blade is still sharp. As a matter of fact, I just finished my monthly card making kicks on here, and are you ready? There were 338 cards with multiple pieces for each one. So you do the math. Tons of them have been cut on here in addition to all my regular cutting and scoring. So you are going to love that. All right, so I'm gonna take now my bone folder and I'm gonna reinforce that scored line. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that you do that. Whenever you're creating a fun fold, it's really important that you reinforce those score lines to make it easier for you to put your card together. Now I've cut a piece of designer series paper Again, all coordinating with what we just did, that's gonna get mounted here. So let me bring in my silicone craft sheet because I have a tendency to get a little zealous with the adhesive. I'm gonna flip that over. And again, we've got plenty of room here. Same paper, same package, which is really gonna maximize your use from your purchase. You know what I love too about the Stampin' Up! Designer Series papers? That you can use them all year round. So one side here has very much a fall theme, but we can use this all year round and really great for outdoorsy cards and masculine cards as well. 
I'm going to open this up so I make sure I've got it centered where I want it right here in my silicone craft sheet to make it easier for you to see. And I'm going to create a panel here on the front of the card, and then I'm going to press that in place. I don't know if you noticed or not, but I did not put adhesive down the middle of my paper. And that's going to be very important for this next step that we're going to do in just a few minutes. I'm going to set this aside for right now. We will come back to that. Next, I have another piece of early espresso cardstock. This measures three by eight and a half. I scored it in half at four and a quarter. So that's already done. And all I'm going to do is just fold that up. Now, very important about this piece and about this piece, they're going to go in opposite directions. So this is going to be your typical card base with the fold on the left. This is going to be backwards with the fold on the right. That's going to be very important for this card. What I'm going to do now with this piece is I want to reinforce it. So I'm going to go ahead and put it on a piece of Cajun Craze cardstock. Remember we talked about that color coordination? That's this color here. Love that you don't have to fuss about your cards and worry about them matching. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. This is going to be a moving card, and it's a fun fold. And I'm always very cautious about my adhesives. So I'm going to use something stronger. Now, if you like liquid glue, you certainly can do that. I am not a good with a liquid glue. I'm really not. I'm messy with it. So I'm going to use tear and tape. And I love this because it's easy to use and it's super, super strong. So I'm going to turn this over and I'm going to add tear and tape around the perimeter of this. Now, I have made this without tear and tape. And I found lots of times opening and closing it and opening and closing it just really didn't hold up like I wanted it to. And I'm quite convinced that whoever you give this to is going to have lots of fun making this card open and close. So I say don't chintz on the adhesive. Spend your time putting it on there and you're going to love it. I'm going to burnish that or rub that down inside the paper because I'm using that same attachment on my take your pick tool and I'm removing that other paper side to reveal the sticky side. So this is double sided tape and again, really, really strong. And my eyes are far away, so bear with me here. I just want to make sure I get up underneath that and not lift up the tape itself. All right, so now we've got our tape removed. And what we're going to do is we're going to add this to this layer. And I'm looking to mirror this to leave a little bit of a border all the way around. All right, that's good to go. You see that this is going to open. So we have to decorate this. So let's add a piece of cardstock inside of here. I've got a piece of Whisper White. Again, all the cutting dimensions are going to be in a link in the video description below when we are finished tonight. And I'm going to pull out my Cajun Craze ink pad. Again, more color coordination. And let's go ahead and put a greeting inside of here. This one for the inside of my card actually came from a different stamp set. It says, giving thanks for you with a very grateful heart. And I want to show you this stamp set because I think it's overlooked very much in the annual catalog. It's called a wish for everything. And they weren't kidding. There is something here for everything. I love that you can create custom builder phrases for the outside. And of course, greetings for the inside of your card. Aren't these fun too? So you can kind of build even more. Love this. There are coordinating dies that are script dies that you can interchange with these as well. And you'll find those in the annual catalog. So I'm going to ink that up here on my Cajun Craze ink pad, and you're going to forgive me because my head's kind of far away, so I'm going to try to make this really nice and straight. At my age, i got to be close. Hey, not bad. I'm going to give myself a B. I'm going to move this ink pad off to the side because we are going to come back to that in just a moment. And then what I'm going to do is bring back my silicone craft sheet because I always get tape all over my table, and I hate that because I'm sticky on everything then. And I'm going to add adhesive around the perimeter here. And this is going to go right inside here on this little flap that we made. Remember, it's going to be backwards. So the fold is on the right. So this is going to go here. I'm looking to make it centered. There we go. Now, we're going to do one more thing. We have to attach this to this. But there's one step I want to do first. So we're going to have to create an opening here because I want to make this a buckle. I want to make this piece go through this piece. And the easiest way to do that is to use the classic label punch. This is another workhorse product here in the stamp studio. I absolutely love it. Not only is it really great for these small greetings they fit inside, it's great for making interactive fun folds because the slit is really small. It's narrow. It's about a half an inch. Now I'm going to turn it upside down so it's easy to use. I'm opening up the card because we want to punch only through this layer. 
Now, important tip for you, you're going to slide this in as far as it will go. And then I'm looking here on the side and I'm looking for the edge of the designer series paper to line it up with the edge of the punch. And once I have it in all the way and I'm convinced it's straight, we're going to squeeze. Okay. This is why you don't want adhesive in the center. It's just going to make it harder to punch. You don't ever want to use your punches through two layers of cardstock. They're really not designed for that, but this is designer series paper, which is very thin. And then the cardstock base itself is fine, but I wouldn't add adhesive to that. Now what we're going to do is we're going to slide over and we're going to do the exact same thing on this side. I am looking to align this. The paper is in all the way as far as it can go. And I'm looking to make sure the designer series paper is lined up to the edge of my punch the best that I can. And let's make sure I get this right while you're all watching me. And then we're going to punch that out. So that's going to leave this this track. That's what we're going to need to create the buckle for our card. Okay, so now we can go ahead and add the piece that's going to go on the inside. Again, remember, this needs to be backwards. So I'm going to open this up, and then I'm going to use snail adhesive. In your case, you can use liquid glue. And you're going to go ahead and adhere this very generously. I know I better use this. Because otherwise, the front of my card will get all full adhesive. And I've ripped them before. Has anyone ever had that happen? I know that's a common thing in paper crafting. And again, I'm just making sure I've got it going the right way. Yep, it's opening this way. This gets centered on this side of the card. So I'm looking at the top and the bottom and the sides to center it the very best that I can. And then we'll press this in place. Okay, we're getting there. We're almost done. There's nothing hard about this. It's just steps. We've got one more piece. You're going to see it's the exact same size. This is going to house our pumpkin. But also very important, you're going to want to use tear and tape, at least on this one side. And because you're all watching me, I'll just do one side, and then we'll compensate with adhesive on the other. And then we'll talk through the pros and the cons of not using a strong adhesive when you're making a fun fold or even a 3D project. I can't stress to you how important that is. If you're going to put the time and materials into a project, use the right adhesives. You'll be so happy that you did. So I'm going to remove that paper backing one more time from that tear and tape. I want to make sure that the tear and tape now is on this side where the crease is to this panel. And we're going to adhere this in place. And I'm going to press to make sure it's good and stuck. Remember this pumpkin? Didn't stick. You got to love that. That now is going to go here. Now, before you get too crazy at hearing it, because I've made this mistake, let's do the buckle. Now, I'm going to take my hand and I'm going to come up underneath here and I'm just going to kind of curl this a little bit. It helps you to break down the fibers and the paper. It's going to make it come in and out of the buckle a lot easier. So this goes down and watch. This goes right inside. Is that slick or what? This is going to help you by placing it in here first to make sure that you don't put this too far le left or right because you don't want to impede on this to make the card unable to open or close. So I'm going to stick this here. Remember, stick with me. I've got another card to show with you that's totally different. I'm going back to the Cajun Craze ink pad, and I've got words that I'm going to stamp here on the front, God willing. Okay, it says, give thanks, all from that same exact Harvest Hellos stamp set. My head, again, is really far away. I always say, you know what? If it doesn't turn out good, I can always send it to my mom. She likes everything I make. <laughs> there we go. We're going to stamp. Well, it's crooked. But you know what? That makes it authentic. Have you guys ever done that? You know, and I had a funny feeling that was going to happen. So let me tell you what I did. I brought in a piece of cardstock just so I could show you because I want you to know I am far from perfect when I'm crafting. I make mistakes just like everybody else. So let me show you a little tip in case this happens to you. Your card's all done. Your greeting's all crooked. Don't fret. There's always a way to fix it. I always say an oops is an opportunity to create more decoration. So let's close this up and let me show you what I will do. I'm going to bring in my scissors and I'm not going to get fancy. Those of you that are really proficient with your paper trimmer, you can absolutely do this. Or if you have a decorative punch, you can certainly do that. And I'm going to trim around this little guy here. And then you know what? I would flip this over. We're going to add some dimensionals to the back. I think only one's going to fit. Yep, let's just do one. That'll work. I'm going to use that attachment again one more time. And we are going to fix this so this looks better. Look at that. That's called a card hack at its best. Don't ever throw it away. There's always a way you can embellish it or fix it. 
So there you go. We've got our buckle card. So this comes out and then it opens up. Really important that you use strong adhesive because this is going to be coming in and out quite a bit and you want to make sure that your card's going to hold up to that. Now I promised you another card. This uses something entirely different. This is a Christmas card. So let me set this one off to the side. Here you go. This is the holiday catalog stamp set called Elfie. Isn't this cute? This is the exact same greeting that I just shared with you from A Wish for Everything. And do you remember how I told you it was offered as a bundle with script dies? I used them here. Isn't this super cute? I used my alcohol-based Stampin' Blends markers, which of course match everything. And here's the Christmas card. This is the Night Before Christmas Designer Series paper. So cute. And then look at, there we go. We've got a greeting inside that actually comes from the Elfie stamp set. Isn't this stinking adorable? I'm telling you what, I'm not sure which one I like better. Which one do you like better? I would love to know. Leave me a comment. Now, I have something else to share with you before we go, and I want to make sure that you know it because this is hot off the press. If you are a stamper and you love stamps, you are not going to want to miss this 24-hour stamp set sale. That is October 23rd, which is this coming Wednesday. It's 15% off select stamps. But then when I saw the list on three pieces of paper of the stamps that are going to be 15% off, I squealed in delight. Well, I've got my pencil being sharpened and I'm going to be making my wish list to place an order. You can order the products that are on sale as well as everything I've used here over at lisastampstudio.com. Now I'm going to turn the camera around. And I want to tell you one more thing. I always say talking hands are not fun for a long period of time. So I wanted you to be able to see me. I offer exclusive and generous ordering rewards, things that you won't find anywhere else. I totally appreciate my customers. You can find those details over on my website at lisastampstudio.com and click on the rewards tab. While you're there, I would love to have you sign up for my free weekly e-newsletter. In that newsletter, I share a tutorial that I don't share on any of my other platforms, and it's completely free, and it's a no-frills email. So I'd love to have you join me. If you have enjoyed today's video, would you please do me a favor? Give it a thumbs up here on YouTube. It certainly helps me. In addition to that, I would love to have you subscribe if you've never subscribed before. And if you click the small bell icon that's next to the subscribe button, you'll get notifications when I'm live here on YouTube, as well as when I upload a new video. Share tonight's video with your crafting friends. It's the highest compliment that you can pay me. And you're going to want to make sure you're subscribed because I'm going to come back live with you. I'm checking up my calendar. I want to make sure I get the date right. That's Wednesday, November 13th at 8 p.m. Eastern time for a brand new project that I'm sure you're not going to want to miss. I have so appreciated that you've been with me here tonight. Thank you so much for joining me, everyone. I look forward to seeing you next time. Have a great day.